And my name is Castles, and I'm an artist working in performance, film, sound, sculpture, and photography. My artwork offers a shared experience for contemplating histories of violence, representation, struggle, and survival. Last May, an advertisement poster for an ex exhibition shown at the Munster Museum, which featured my non-binary body, was censored by the German Deutsche Bahn as being shameful, pornographic, and sexist. The state of North Carolina has recently passed legislation requiring people to use the public toilets that, were, that match the sex they were assigned at birth, as opposed to their current gender identity. Contrary to popular hysteria, which considers the presence of trans people to be a threat, gender non-conforming people especially those of color, are vulnerable to becoming victims of extreme violence. With Creative Capital support, I'm making a new series of sculptures called The Resilience of the 20%, crafted from remnants of a live performance called Becoming an Image that I've been touring internationally since 2012. In Becoming an Image, I unleash an attack on a 2,000 pound clay block, delivering a series of kicks and blows in total darkness. The spectacle is only illuminated by the flash of a photographer which burns the image into the viewer's retina. I initially performed Becoming an Image at the One National Gay and Lesbian Archive at USC, which houses the largest collection of LGBTQ materials in the world. And my performance points to evidence of queer and trans lives that are often missing from historical representation. The result of this performance is a series of bashed bodies marked with imprints of fists, knees, elbows, sweat, and struggle. My monument project, The Resilience of the 20%, refers to a sickening statistic that in 2012, murders of trans people increased worldwide by 20%. We are in a moment of high trans visibility, but representation of some does not equate lived equality for all. With the help of Creative Capital, I'm cash, casting bashed remnants from becoming an image into durable sculptural materials to make them into public artworks. As monuments, these sculptures will mark, mark sites where acts of violence against gender non-conforming people have occurred. I'm working alongside community groups in each city of presentation to determine the best sites for the monuments to be placed. I'll be making a bronze pour of this sculpture this coming fall with the support of the University of Syracuse and lead faculty member and fellow Creative Capital recipient, Sam Van Aken. I have three casts of the monuments in the works, one in cement, one in porcelain, and in bronze. <coughs> I have upcoming exhibitions and temporary placements at the Philadelphia Academy of Fine Arts, the Contemporary Art Gallery in Vancouver, and the Bemis Center in Nebraska. And while slated for exhibition, the next steps to place these monuments permanently in public sites brings visibility to lives that are often too omitted from both history and the media. 
I am continuing to make further themes, developing themes of projects I created last year, several new pieces, which investigate the representations of violence. In this time, art is vital. We collectively sit in this room and we share this experience together. This is our Democratic National Convention. <laughs> and it's in this space of gathering and solidarity that I ask you, where do you think my work could go to progress beyond violence, survival, and struggle? I'm open to the right opportunities for presentation, and should you want to further support my practice, come talk to me. Thank you.